In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to find the length of a line segment, or sometimes called the distance between two points. So we're going to start off with something really easy. And then um, in the last part of the lesson, I'm going to show you how to find the distance between a point and a line. A little bit trickier, but we'll figure that out when we get to it. So the length of a line segment, if the line is a horizontal line like this one. So if we have a horizontal line, I know that you can tell me very easily what the length of this line segment is. So we have a horizontal line segment. So you'd say, okay, well, this is 2, 1, and this is 5, 1. So if we call this point x1, y1, and this point here, x2, y2, I'm sure you can tell me that all you have to do is subtract the x values. You take the difference in the x values because the y's are not changing in height at all, so we're only concerned about how long it is from here to here. So all you have to do, you would say the length, and we use a little letter a, a uh, little letter L, sorry, and so you'd say the length of AB is equal to 5 minus 2, which is 3. So you'd say it's 3 units. So actually what we're doing here is we're doing x2 minus x1. So that was our length for a horizontal line. Now when we look at a vertical line like this, if we labeled these points, let's say this is x1, y1, and x2, y2. If I asked you how long is this line that goes from here to here, you would look at the y values. So for a vertical line segment, all you're doing is subtracting the y value. So here's our vertical line segment now. So we're going to take the difference in the y values. So the length CD here is going to be 3 minus minus 1. And that would give us 4. So if you had done it the other way around, let's say I went, oh, minus 1, minus 3, you would have minus 4. And it would have to be the absolute value of that, right? Because you can't have a negative length for a line segment. That just wouldn't make any sense. So if this was x1, y1 here, and that's x2, y2, then the length would have been y2 minus y1. Very easy. And I mean, it's just obvious, right? Just intuitive for you. Now the problem happens when we have a line segment that's on a diagonal such as this. So the easiest way to do this, and I'm sure you're going to remember this as soon as I show you, if I drop this line down here so that I'm at the same level as this one, and I come across like this, which would make this a right angle, I'm sure you can tell me how to find the length of a hypotenuse, right? You did that before. The length of a hypotenuse, you need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So that's what we're going to do. Let's say this is E, this is F, and we'll call this G here. And this point right here, so it's going to have the same X coordinate as E. So that's going to be one and the same height as F. So that's going to be the point one and minus three. So if I want to find the length of EF, I'd say, well, EF squared, because remember the Pythagorean theorem, that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, right? Do you remember doing that? I'm sure you do. It was quite a big lesson. And maybe if you had a nice teacher, they would have let you make these squares and cut them out and put them so they fit perfectly into here. Or maybe remember it as the cab rule. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Or maybe you said A squared equals B squared plus C squared, where A was the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter, any one of these. And again, this is the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. 
Okay, so that would mean that EF squared is going to be equal to EG squared plus GF squared. And EG, this would just be like we did over here. So it's, this is Y2 minus Y1. That's the length of that one squared. And GF is going to be X2 minus X1 squared. And to find EF, just the length of EF, remember finally you have to take the square root. So you would have to put all this in here. Now you're going to say, how am I going to remember that equation or formula? How am I going to remember how to find the length of a line segment? I'm going to show you really a really cute little trick that I show my students. So it's the length of a line segment. So we're going to call it L. So L is going to be equal to, and then I made them do this. Watch, it's really kind of cute. So this is like the guy's head. Here's his nose. These are the eyes. Need some eyebrows. And if you put a little happy face here, you can see how easy that's going to be to remember. So you need to plug in the other values. So here, once you've done your little face, you can say y2 minus y1 plus x2 minus x1. Now, it doesn't matter if you do the x's first or the y's, because this squared plus this squared is the big one squared. It doesn't matter which order you put that in, right? You remember how to do Pythagorean theorem. So this just helps you to draw it. So you put in your radical sign. You make the eyes and the nose. And these are the little eyebrows. And there's your happy face. Okay, so now let's get on to the harder part of the lesson. Which is asking you to find the distance from a point to a line. Okay, so a little bit trickier. So this is one from um, from the textbook. I don't know, it was something like letter C of some number. And so the question says to find the distance from the point 7, 6 to the line 2x plus 3y equals 6. So what we want to do is draw a little picture. Even though you might not be asked to do this, it's always a good idea because then you can check, well, was the slope supposed to be positive or negative or whatever. So let's sketch this line here, y equal, or 2x plus 3y equals 6. Now, the easiest way to sketch this would be to find the x and y intercepts. Now, you might put it into y equals mx plus b format. You're going to have to do that later anyway. But for now, let's just use this. What would be the x-intercept? So x-intercept, you cover up the y's, right, and solve your little equation. So the x-intercept happens when y is 0. So x-intercept is going to be 3, right? 2x equals 6. x-intercept is 3. The y-intercept is, so we set the x to 0 and solve this little equation. Don't forget the sign. You always have to check that. So 3y is 6. y is equal to 2. So very easy for me to sketch this on my little dry drawing here. So I'm going to put my line right through these two points like that. Okay, so that's my line 2x plus 3y equals 6. It's always a good idea to label things when you're doing drawings as well. Your teacher will appreciate knowing that you know what you're doing. Okay, now how are we going to find out how far this point is away from this line? Now, the first thing you need to know, and maybe you don't know this because unless someone told you, you might not really think about it, is the shortest line or the distance from here to here. The shortest line to this is when the line is perpendicular. You can see that if you went to draw it. So if I went from this line here, I mean, look how far it is from here to here. So... When you're asked to find the distance, 
they're looking for the shortest distance. So when I'm perpendicular to this line, something like this, that would be the shortest distance to um, the shortest distance to the line. So I'm going and so I need to know that that's perpendicular. Okay, so it's going to be a perpendicular line. And then I need to figure out how far it is from here to here. Now, I need to know what this point is, and I need to know um, I have this point. So how am I going to figure out how what the equation of this line is? Why do I need to know the equation of this line? Because in order to figure out the distance from here to here, I'm going to need to know this point of intersection so that I can find the distance between two points. So I needed a point on this line, and the only way I can find that is if I do find the equation of this line, find the point of intersection of it with the other line, and then I can calculate the distance. So we're going to do all that. So the first thing we did was sketch it. Done. So this is for our sketch. Now the second thing you're going to want to do is put your point on. We've done that. Add the point. And third, I need to find the slope of this line. So to find the slope of this line, knowing that it's perpendicular, I want to know the slope of this line because this line slope will be the negative reciprocal of this one. So let's rewrite 2x plus 3y equals 6 and put it into y equals mx plus b format. So that would be 3y equals minus 2x plus 6 and y equals minus 2 thirds x plus 2. Okay, so this is in y equals mx plus b format. And now I want to know what is the slope of the perpendicular bisector. So this is the slope of my line. And I want to know slope of perpendicular bisector. Now remember, a perpendicular line has a negative reciprocal of this number. So minus 2 thirds will become 3 over 2. So this is the slope of the perpendicular bisector is 3 over 2. Now let's find the equation of this line. What's the equation of the line that goes through point P and is perpendicular to this line 2x plus 3y equals 6? So to do that, I'm going to use this negative reciprocal so this is my slope, and the point is going to be 7, 6, because that is a point on this line. I don't know any other point. So I just have to write out y equals mx plus b, and I'm going to plug in everything I know. So right now I have 6 for y. The slope is 3 halves. x is 7 plus b. So this is going to give me 21 over 2 and this is going to be 12 over 2 equals 21 over 2 plus b and b is going to be equal to minus 9 over 2. Okay, so therefore the um, line perpendicular to y equals 2x plus 3y equals 6 and passing through, let me move this up here, and passing through our point p76 is y equals, now my slope was 3 halves, 3 halves x minus 9 over 2. Okay, so now I have this line here, so I'm going to write that on here, y equals 3 halves x minus 9 over 2. So 
just take a little check minus 9 over 2 that's minus 4 and a half so yeah it would probably be down here 1 2 3 4 and a half my sketch isn't exact but yeah we're pretty close and it has a slope up 3 over 2 it's looking good always check those little pieces of information that you found so if you do make a silly mistake which happens often you will want to go back and fix it before you go any farther okay so now I have this line and I have this line and if I want to know where these two points intersect and I do want to know that so where do these two lines where do the two lines intersect why am I trying to find that remember in the end what you're trying to find is the distance so I want to know how far it is from here to here so to do that I need this point and I need this point so this is the whole trick here is, is to find this point and the only way I can find that is by finding the intersection point of these two lines okay so I'm going to go back to the first equation that we had which was 2x plus 3y equals 6 and this other equation way down here I'm going to write this in the same format so that I can line them up and do elimination or substitution or we're going to use elimination so let's say I take this equation and I'm going to multiply it by 2 to get rid of these fractions so that's going to give me 2y equals 3x minus 9 and if I line it up like this one my equation is going to be 3x I bring the 2y over here is going to make it minus 2y equals so I did 3x minus 2y and bring the 9 over here equals 9 okay so now I'm all set to solve for the point of intersection and remember to do that what we want to do is use elimination so I'm going to do um, I'm going to get rid of the X's so I'm going to do 3 times equation 1 and I'm going to do 2 times equation 2 so 3 times equation 1 is going to give me 6x plus 9y equals 18 and 2 times this equation is going to give me 6x minus 4y equals 18 now to get rid of the x's I'm going to subtract remember they have the same sign I'm going to subtract these two equations and that's going to get rid of the x's and 9 minus minus 4y minus a minus that means add so 13y is equal to 18 minus 18 which is 0 so y is going to be equal to 0 now don't forget you can divide 0 by a number so I have y equals 0 and I'm going to say when y equals 0 remember I want the point what's x equal to what's x equal to so I'm going to plug that into either of my equations and I already know that that's like finding the y intercept of that line right so when y is 0 x is going to be equal to so 2x plus 3 times 0 equals 6 2x equals 6 and x is equal to 3 so I'm going to just move this up here so I can say therefore the point of intersection is x is 3 y is 0 and if we look at our diagram over here that's pretty darn close right 3 0 so right here 3 0 now I can find the distance from this point to this line very easily because I have two points let's call this point um, well it doesn't really matter but we could call it Q but we want to know the length the length of PQ is going to be now I'm going to write out my formula first so you get some practice you draw your cute little radical sign you make your two brackets with the plus sign in between a little nose a plus sign so I have 
y2 minus y1 square x2 minus x1 squared and that's going to make happy face you're not going to put that in your your work though okay okay so i'm going to do six minus zero so this is the square root of six minus zero squared so six minus zero and then seven minus three so plus seven minus three squared that's going to give me the square root of 36 6 squared and 7 minus 3 is 4 squared is 16 and that's the square root of 52. Now the question asks you to give the answer to one decimal place so 52 is going to be 7 7 times 7 is 49 and we have 3 remainder and that gives you approximately 7.2 so therefore, the distance is, and you say approximately because you did round it, 7.2 units. Because we don't have any units for it. Okay, so that's how you find the distance from a point to a line. It's a lot of calculations. There's a lot to do here to get to finding this point so that you can use this little length of a line segment but I'm sure you if you just follow through and do it step by step that you'll have no problem and that's the lesson for today I hope you enjoyed it please subscribe and encourage your friends to join in I've had lots of success from students watching my channel and I hope that um, I can help you as well bye for now